Good day, my name's Christian Omaza from Otago University originally, but I've moved on to uh, Italy now, to Rome. Um, and I've just finished off my PhD, and behind me is the poster, which is the culmination of the years worth of work through the PhD. So one of the things that I did for this project was look at three drill cores from Antarctic fjords, that's in here. And these fjords are actually near the Ross Sea, so you can see here on this picture here, maybe you can see it, but anyway. So these fjords are tucked up um, in here in the Transantarctic Mountains, and at the mouths of these fjords, they collected three drill cores somewhere in the 70s and 80s. And I thought as a project, I'll revisit them and see if the chronologies are right, and then see what these drill cores can tell us about the evolution of the fjords and maybe the evolution of the climate that created the fjords or that put the sediment into the fjords. And so as part of the project, I have to create some new age models for the drill cores, which are down here. These are magnetostratigraphic age models, so they use reversals of the Earth's magnetic polarity field to try and understand when the sediments were deposited. And then using those new age models, I decided to break the drill cores up into time slices, which is the central part of the poster here. And you can see these are the three drill cores with the different coloured sediments, so yellow, these are sandstones, the greens, these are diamix, these are glacial sediments, where glaciers come along and deposit sediments underneath it. And then very, very thin intervals here, which are probably close to impossible to see, but they're there. They're very thin mud intervals. Now, these are ice-free, uh, so these are sediments that tell us that the fjords were ice-free and the glaciers disappeared. And the interpretation of those sediments is that the climate was actually warmer in order for the, uh, the glaciers to retreat up valley. And so, at one point, when these sediments were deposited, we probably had quite deep fjords, 600 metres. Now, that's information from little fossils in the sediment. And so you can see here the blue colours, that's actually where I've decided to raise sea level and see how far inland it floods these, which are now valleys, but fjords at the time. And so the big story that's inside this poster is that there's an evolution five million years from zero up here, present day, all the way back to five million years ago of the evolution of the fjords. And what's really interesting is that we know now from other drilling projects that this is a fairly critical interval because Antarctica went from something that was probably quite a bit warmer than it is today to a modern day Antarctic ice sheet and Antarctic climate. And so the, the big thing that sticks out is that you can see the sediments at the bottom here, they're all green, lots of glaciers and there's lots of these muds in here, these deep ocean sediments or these ice free sediments up at the top here where there's a lot of sand. So these are actually lake sediments and these are indicative of, uh, of a much colder climate with the sands blowing around and, uh, and basically a very dry cold environment. And so the cool thing is that once you have all these time packets of the different sediments from the drill cores, you can actually start joining it with the bigger story from around Antarctica and from the ocean of when glaciers expanded on land and when they retreated on land and also when the ocean was a lot warmer. So in this interval here where you see these tiny little stripes, we know that the sea around Antarctica was at least five degrees warmer than what it is today. And this green bar here also tells us that the Ross Sea, which now has a lot of ice on it, was also free of ice. And at the same time, in here, you can't see it properly, but maybe you can, there are these little mud intervals, and they're also down here, which coincide with another one of these green bars, where we know that there was no ice in the Ross Sea, where these glaciers also retreated from the valley. So we know the glaciers were gone, and that there wasn't a lot of ice around Antarctica, and the water was a lot warmer. So that's one of the stories that came out of it, was that the glaciers in these fjords are telling a very similar story to what the ocean around Antarctica was telling us, that things were, once upon a time, four million years ago, a lot warmer than they are today. So another story that's inside these drill cores is the story of the magnetic minerals that are in there. Now it might sound really boring, but these tiny little magnetic minerals, they tell a very powerful story and we can actually measure what type of mineral is in there and how much of it is in there. And one of the stories is of that, the sediments that I talked about earlier, that tell us about a warmer Antarctica than today. And it's a magnetic mineral that I found in the bottom of one of the drill cores, it's this drill core here, and just in the bottom of these sediments here, which are about four to five million years old. And that's this story here on the far side. And what I found there was, there's a magnetic mineral called magnetite. And what happens when you erode the magnetite out of a rock, and then you leave it sitting in the countryside somewhere and you put rain on it, it rains on top of the sediment, the magnetite actually oxidizes, the outside of it changes the chemistry. And so what happens to the mineral is actually that the magnetic behavior or the, the way it behaves when I measure it with different instruments, it changes. And so I can tell that the magnetic minerals in here, from a time when we think Antarctica was a lot warmer, the magnetic mineral is telling me that actually this magnetic grain or the grains in the sediment at some point they may have seen rain 
or fresh water falling on them on the top of the hills where they were eroded from. So that's an interesting story because it kind of works together with the whole idea that maybe Antarctica was a lot warmer and in a place where now there is definitely no rain and there's very little snowfall, we may have had a situation where there was actually rain and it was above 5 degrees. We know from the ocean already that the ocean was probably 4 or 5 degrees above zero, which is too warm for ice. And with this, maybe we know now that also inland, away from the ocean, it was also warmer, which was always a bit of a question. Was it actually warmer on land as well? And maybe with the story of this magnetic mineral, the oxidation of around the edge of that magnetic mineral, that maybe it was wetter and warmer. Now we're going to step up a little bit more towards more present time. And in the upper portion of these drill cores, now as you see here in the middle there, there's a point in time where there aren't a lot of sediments. And that was the time when Antarctica actually started to cool a lot. We know that around 3 million years, things became a lot colder. The magnetic minerals from 3 million years ago to the present, they don't have this oxidation. So that's absent. So that's already telling you that things may have been different. And there's something else which is very interesting in the magnetic minerals. I see the appearance after about 3 million years, 2.5 million years, of very, very, very fine magnetic minerals. So fine that some might not that tiny. And these magnetic minerals, maybe they were made by um, impacts when you, when you blow sand around in the countryside using very strong winds, um, such as what's happening today in the Antarctic, you've got the catabatic wind systems, winds in excess of 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, where there are sand grains blowing around all over the countryside and it's very dry and very dusty. And when these grains run into one another, they can smash holes in one another and little bits will fall out, which may be these very fine little magnetite flakes. And I think I found a signal in all three drill cores where after three million years, suddenly I see these very fine little magnetic grains, which you do not see before three million years. So this may be an indication of the fact that at three million years or after, the winds ramped up a lot. It became very dusty, very dry, and that's probably because it tucked it cool a lot. Now this works very well with the talk that we heard earlier on today, um, where they have an indicator offshore, many thousands of kilometers away from a deep ocean drill site, where they see an increase in dust, and also maybe an increase in the amount of cold water that was generated around Antarctica and that was filling the ocean. So things got a lot colder. And so this is not only in this place that we see the signal, but research that's only two years old or a year old is saying the same story, but it's from many kilometers away um, uh, along the Wilkesland margin. So there's another thing where maybe we're seeing the same story, but using different different indicators. And this is just a magnetic tool, basically. So maybe we can track wind currents using this as a magnetic